What's up everyone? Howler here, coach of your Delta Gligers. Today I am bringing you the week five match for the BBL against our good friend OG Albina and his Miami Mets. You can see his team over on the right side of the screen. Let's get this disclaimer right out of the way. This has been sort of a week from hell. Uh, I got kind of sick over the, over the weekend and fell behind on stuff. Uh, this team that I built is not well I, I didn't I didn't really even build it it's mostly not my prep I just changed up a few different things um, so yeah and this video was gonna be a little bit lower energy as a result definitely not matching the hype levels that we had in last week's video uh, but uh, we'll still try to give Owen a good match uh, and I'll quickly go over the team that we're bringing. Uh, you can see his team on the right. I don't know if I said that already. Um, anyways, Calyrex obviously has to come. Uh, Glacial Lance. Everything besides Bell Metal and Melodic, basically. So we have Seed Bomb for the Melodic. And High Horsepower instead of Close Combat for the uh, Mel Metal because uh, I don't want Marshadow pivoting in on close combat and then stealing any attack boosts that I may have from clicking Swords Dance or uh, getting kills from, uh, or getting boosts from Chilling Nay. So yeah, that's, and I don't even think that either one would KO Mel Metal anyways because it's it's just so ridiculously fat. Uh, Urshifu here. Sucker Punch, Wicked Blow, uh, Ice Punch, I guess, is there for mainly for Salamence uh, in case Salamence wants to try setting up on us, even though we have a Wicked Blow to negate an attack drop. Uh, poison Jab, obviously, for the fairies because there's a Tapu Bulu and an Aromatisse. So, Poison Jab hits. Obviously, Poison Jab hits the Tapu Bulu harder if that thing were to come, although I'm more or less expecting Aromatisse. Good thing about uh, Urshifu's ability, Unseen Fist, we can, uh, we can, if we need to, we can break through any uh, Wish Protect shenanigans. I uh, can't protect in front of Urshifu, as we uh, found out in the Week 2 game. Uh, but the plan is to get... Calyrex in versus Aromatisse anyway and click Sword Dance in front of that thing so I can um, force kills. Uh, we'll probably end up leading with this Runerigus and just trying to hazard stack uh, Owen. Toxic Spikes are generally a good strategy to bring against him um, and we got Stealth Rocks as well. We can potentially live a hit from from Marshadow if there is if we decide to keep this around for a little longer um, and then we can poltergeist that thing and hit it super effectively uh, I I mean Marshadow also gets poltergeist but I think it makes a lot more sense to have spectral thief uh, it's possible he could have triple ghost coverage with spectral thief poltergeist shadow sneak um, I think Shadow Sneak makes a lot of sense to uh, hit things if I have Trick Room set up. Um, so, yeah, we take on Marshadow, okay, especially if he decides to lead with it, at least he won't get a clean Oko on us. And if we consume our Kesed Berry, then Poltergeist won't do any damage to us, because you have to have an item for Poltergeist to do damage. Rocky Helmet Vicavolt can pivot in against Melmetal. That's kind of the thing that you do against Melmetal most of the time. We have Sticky Webs there just in case uh, we want to pile on the hazards. Um, if we get uh, Marshadow to take a minus one from Sticky Web, then we should be outspeeding it with our Urshifu. Um, uh, roost off any damage we take from uh, Melmetal, Volt Switch around, Bug Buzz, everything else. Pretty simple. Uh, Tapu Fini, I like this set a lot. Uh, Choice Scarf. Uh, he's got... Not, well, if we can at least weaken Melmetal enough, that's going to be his main 
uh, fairy resist. There really isn't that much that he want. Well, I guess uh, Roselia might like could come as well, but the top half of his team is so strong overall. Um, I'd be pretty shocked to see anything like Roselia show up, but you never know. Um, so we have to definitely uh, cripple the Roselia a bit if we want to be able to clean with this, but we can outspeed stuff like Marshadow, Crocodile, Salamence, hit them all super effectively. Um, and probably even a Dragon Dancing Necrozma too, we would outspeed that after only one boost, so. We can maybe uh, trick our Scarf away if we decide that we don't need it. We could trick it away to something bulkier like a Melodic or an Aromatisse or something like that. And then this is not the right EV spread. I changed this to, um, no, that's not what I did. Um, I changed this spread. We got four in SPDF, max speed, modest, and we have Fire Blast instead of Overheat. This is the set. Uh, we are special attacking Talonflame. We will not have our, uh, won't, we won't take any recoil damage from our flying type moves, so we can try to keep Talonflame at full HP for as long as possible. With Gale Wings, we can always outprioritize the Marsh Shadow. We're modest max speed so that we outspeed adamant max speed Marshadow. I don't think um, I don't think he brings Jolly. I don't think he brings Jolly. I don't think he needs to outspeed as elf because he can just shadow sneak it. So adamant makes sense to me. That's all he needs to outspeed my next fastest mon, which is Nihiligo. So yeah, that is going to be our team, and we'll see you right back for the battle. Okay, here we are back with the battle. Uh, unfortunately, this does have to be a post-com. Uh, the live com uh, audio was kind of crackly and really bad quality, so I, I wasn't going to upload that. And uh, my the live com was just about as low energy as the uh, team builder was, so losing that really not that big a deal. It's just annoying for me having to do the extra work in post-coming this now. Uh, but I think it's for the best. So looking at Owen's team, there really aren't very, uh, there really aren't any major surprises. Uh, the only thing of note is that Crocodile did not come, so that means that Necrozma is his only potential stealth rocker. I really wasn't expecting any of the other mons that didn't come. I think Aromatisse is a better check to uh, Urshifu than uh, Tapu Bulu is. Uh, Tapu Bulu being four times weak to Poison Jab. And then Rotom Fan, Roselia, and Porygon, I don't think he's brought to a single game all season long, so I'm not surprised to see uh, those left on the bench. Uh, getting into the game now, I did have my dedicated lead in Runerigus. Uh, I'm Cassaberry, so I don't fear a, a Marsh Shadow knocking me out if he wants to lead with that. And much to my surprise, he is going to lead off with his Marsh Shadow. So, I see this thing in front of me and I'm just like, well, if this thing's going to attack me on the first turn, I would like to get a big chunk of damage off against him with the Poltergeist. If he wants to switch into anything else on his team, I don't really fear getting knocked out in one hit by, by anything. So I can just go for free damage here. He goes for the Spectral Thief and pops my Cassid Berry, will take away his Technician ability, and we'll get a big chunk of damage off against him with the Poltergeist. However, we are not offensively invested, so that's not going to knock out Marshadow. Uh, I can still take another Spectral Thief, though. So, thinking right here that he might want to switch out and preserve his Marshadow for later in the game, I am just going to set up my Toxic Spikes. Because I can revenge this Marshadow later with uh, my Talonflame, because I will outspeed, or even my Choice Scarf Tapu Fini, potentially. However, he does just stay in. And I was really surprised that he was just going to lead his Marshadow and be willing to trade it for my Runerigus. Uh, but, because he could have easily gone out into something like Melodic that can recover uh, off any damage Runerigus does to it, and then uh, click Scald and potentially knock me out on my much uh, weaker, specially defensive side. So, I really wanted to make sure I got my Toxic Spikes up if that was the play that he made. Uh, Runerigus damaging Melodic, that damage was not important to me. So, uh, I bring in my Talonflame now. I, because this thing is so low, I don't have to risk go, uh, hitting a Hurricane. 
Uh, I will just click the more accurate Fire Blast, but he does switch it out and goes into the Melodic. I was not about to uh, predict that play with, a, with the biggest threat to my teams uh, sitting in front of me. We do miss the Fire Blast, it doesn't really matter that much um, uh, because he did switch out. And I will just click U-Turn now, praying that he's not Rocky Helmet. I cannot confirm what item he is, be it, whether it be Flame Orb or Leftovers. I can't confirm Leftovers because Leftovers activate after the uh, residual damage from Poison. Uh, or sorry, no, they, they come before Poison, so I couldn't tell based on that first turn of it coming in whether it's not it was Leftovers or Rocky Helmet or whatever. But thankfully it's not Rocky Helmet, it does, uh, and I just uh, bring in my Vickavolt here. As he flip turns out, uh, actually takes Rocky Helmet chip from flip turn, which is nice. Uh, Salamence comes in now, and I will just uh, switch out into my Tapu Fini because the way he brought it in, I thought he was going to be like a special attacker with Fire Blast. So I didn't want to let uh, Vickavolt take that hit. But he actually just goes straight for a Dragon Dance, which really, uh, really surprised me. There are a lot of plays that Owen made that surprised me here in this game, to be honest. Um, I And he just goes for dual wing beat. Like, my Tapu Fini's at full HP. This t Salamence isn't going to be an effective breaker at this point in the game. Maybe it was like a super bulky set with weakness policy or Roselli Berry or something, expecting to live a Moonblast, but it's never going to live an Ice Beam. Uh, so Salamence basically does nothing in this game and goes down right here and this is a huge mistake uh, I don't know if I'd say it's a huge mistake in hindsight it obviously is because he sacks off his Marshadow for no reason totally not expecting Tapu Fini to be scarfed and that was uh, the fact that he went for Dragon Dance I could like I could hide the fact that I was a scarfed Tapu Fini and that was uh, that worked out incredibly well for us um, now, obviously, realizes I'm Scarfed, he can go into the Mel Metal, and it's an easy prediction for him to click Rock Slide here. What I wasn't expecting was for him to actually be faster than my Vickavolt. Uh, I was just going to click Roost here to try and uh, stall him out, and hopefully he missed a Rock Slide eventually. Um, but it, as, it, as it turns out, because I didn't want to Volt Switch out into anything, um, uh, as, it, as, as it turns out... Um, he is just faster than my than my Vickavolt, and that makes me wonder if he's going to be faster than my Calyrex as well, which could potentially be really bad. Uh, I do not have good ways of breaking down this Mel Metal. My, basically, my play right here is to go into Urshifu and hope that uh, and hope that he's threatened out uh, by a potential fighting move on this set. And I absolutely should have close combat on this Urshifu uh, over Ice Punch. There's no reason for me to have Ice Punch. Uh, that's a change that I should have made uh, from the team that uh, uh, Panda built for me. Shoutouts to you, Panda, by the way. Um, but definitely should have had a fighting move on there. Uh, but I do just say, fuck it, I'm going to make the prediction Aroma T switches in here, and I go straight for the Poison Jab. Unfortunately, even with the Poison, uh, poison Chip, he is not going to be in range to die to another Poison Jab, so I am going to switch out my Urshifu, save it for later in the game, go into my Calyrex. I know that Calyrex can uh, eat up any hit from this uh, Aromatisse, and we'll even outspeed it and get huge damage off against it. He's not going to go for the Wish because uh, uh, because of Unseen Fist. Urshifu can break through Wish Protect Aromatisse. Does just go for the Moonblast. And now I'm going to make a misplay. Uh, I decide to click High Horsepower uh, instead of a Glacial Lance uh, because I wanted maximum damage uh, against the Melmetal coming in if he was indeed going to be faster than my Calyrex because I only have four investment in speed. Um, so uh, the, because I went for High Horsepower, I don't knock out the Aromatisse and he ends up dying to Poison which means that my Calyrex does not get a plus one boost in attack from Chilling Nay. Had I clicked Glacial Lance there, I would be at plus one right now, and he actually brings in the Melodic instead of the Melmetal, uh, which uh, again surprised me. I just thought Melmetal was going to come in and knock me out here, but maybe he wasn't. Maybe he thinks I'm going to be f uh, a little bit faster, uh, a little bit faster than what he invested for. I'm not totally sure. Uh, but I am going to decide to preserve my Calyrex now and switch out into my Tapu Fini and try to trick this Melodic, my Choice Scarf. I don't feel like I need my Choice Scarf anymore. And preventing this thing from just sitting uh, in front of the rest of my team 
Clicking Scald Recover, Scald Recover, I think is going to be really beneficial. So I'm just hoping that he stays in here uh, and allows me to trick him, and that's exactly what he does. He will take the Choice Scarf, and I will take away his Flame Orb, uh, which is uh, pretty funny, because uh, the uh, my Tapafini is not going to get burned because of the Misty Terrain. Uh, I think that I should have thought a little bit about bringing Telepathy Tapafini, to be honest, because I did bring uh, Toxic Spikes, and because Misty Surge is active, this Necrozma does not get poisoned, I don't really care about my Tapafini getting burned, and I, seeing that this Necrozma is now physical, it would have been really funny if I tricked the Flame Orb that I, to this Necrozma that I just received from his Melodic. Uh, he does go for a Swords Dance, and then he's going to go for a Totemize, which I don't think was a play that he should have made. I don't think he needed the Autotomize Speed Boost to take on the rest of my team, um, and because I got a lot of extra damage off against him with my Finny. And because I've seen now two of his moves, I'm assuming that he has Photon Geyser, uh, which means that he's not going to have coverage to hit both my Calyrex and my Urshifu. So... I can, I can save my Tapu Fini here, assuming he's going for a fo uh, Photon Geyser on this turn. Go into my Calyrex, which is going to resist that hit, and see if I can live too. Uh, and it, like, because he would need Knock Off on a physical set to hit Calyrex. Uh, if he doesn't have it, then Photon Geyser is going to be the best move he has to hit me. Um, and he has to have Brick Break for Urshifu, and uh, Brick Break and Photon Geyser are like the same power against Calyrex. Uh, and uh, he doesn't kill me with Photon Geyser, and Necrozma goes down, we do get our attack boost uh, this time. Is, uh, only two Mons remaining are going to be the uh, Melodic and the Melmetal, he does bring out Melodic once again. Calyrex will faint for the first time this season, unfortunately, so it's not going to have a perfect uh, kill-death ratio, but uh, that's fine, like, perfect records are overrated anyway, they're a curse, so, um, uh, I, yeah, I was, I was saying, the reason why I don't think he needed to go for Autotomize there, because I still had two forms of priority in the back to pick him off, uh, I had a Sucker Punch Urshifu and, uh, a full HP Talonflame with Gale Wings in the back, so, I think he just should have knocked out my, uh, my Tapu Fini at that point, but, uh, I don't think it, um, I don't think it mattered in the grand scheme of things. Um, maybe he could have just gone for Autotomize instead of uh, clicking Swords Dance, and then he could have kept Necrozma at higher HP. But yeah, I don't think it mattered in the grand scheme of things. So the Melodic is Choice Scarfed into Scald. I can bring in Tapu Fini, click Surf, because I know that's going to do the most damage to the incoming Melmetal. Uh, even if Melodic stayed in, it's not going to be doing jacked uh, shit to Tapu Fini with Scald, and it's going to be wearing itself down to the Toxic over time. So. I just click Surf twice against the Melmetal, does very, very little damage, makes me think that this is Assault Vest. Now I bring in Talonflame, and I go for the Fire Blast. I don't think this is going to kill, but it actually does a lot more damage than I thought. He will just click Rock Slide, and Melmetal picks up its third KO of the game. This thing put in a ton of work against my team. But thankfully, I still have my Urshifu left. It's the last Mon on my side. I can knock this out with a Wicked Blow. And then Melodic is still in the back, and Melodic is... Choice Scarfed, and it's because my Urshifu is not heavily speed invested, Melodic will outspeed my Urshifu now. So uh, I'm just going to go for Wicked Blow again right here. Uh, I kind of have to hope that he doesn't get a crit on uh, uh, one of the two Scalds. It's not the first Scald, uh, it, it doesn't do 50%, so I can just click Wicked Blow for free, and then there's no reason for me not to click Sucker Punch. Because, uh, you know, it's it's Scarfed into Scald, it can't click Recover. This is the reason why I tricked Melodic the Scarf in the first place, so that it could not recover off any damage. And we're going to win this game 1-0 over Owen. Great game. Uh, really, really close down to the wire, and improved to 5-0 on the season. Uh, so, yeah, lots to unpack here. Uh, I think... I think that there was a chance Owen could have won that game if he switched out his Melodic, uh, sorry, if he switched out the Melmetal when I brought in Talonflame there, um, and I actually should have mentioned, I, in the Builder, I changed Overheat uh, to Fire Blast, and I probably, in hindsight, Overheat would have been just powerful enough to knock out the Melmetal from that range. Um, so that could have potentially been huge, uh, that change, but uh, we still ended up winning the game 1-0, so all, it's all good. 
Yeah, but if he had gone into the Melodic there uh, to take on my Talonflame, I didn't have a switch in. I, I didn't really have a switch in, but see, the thing is, is he didn't know that I did not have a fighting move on my Urshifu. Uh, and because of that, had he gone into Melodic, he might have had a chance to win. Uh, because uh, him making that switch gives him the extra turn. It, it allows him to burn an extra turn of Misty Terrain, which means that... Uh, the turn that Urshifu clicked Wicked Blow against Melodic, uh, I would have he would have had a chance to burn me with Scald, and that could have been really bad, uh, because uh, if he had burned me with Scald, then uh, even had I had close combat on Urshifu, then uh, if I had been burned, I probably don't knock out Melmetal, and then Melmetal would knock me out with Double Iron Bash. So I think that was probably the best play that he could have made in that situation to try to come away with that uh, with a win uh, but again like it's hard for him to know that I wouldn't have a fighting move like I absolutely should have uh, ice punch wasn't serving me whatsoever there um, uh, him bringing in Marshadow unsuspecting of my tap finish choice scarf was massive uh, not having to switch anything else into that Marshadow late in the game was pretty important uh, because if I have to bring in Talonflame to revenge Marshadow, uh, I have to make a prediction uh, whether or not he goes into the Melodic, because if he switches in Melodic on any hit from my Talonflame, I lose quite a bit of momentum, because he brings that in, takes very little damage, and then he can flip turn out. Um, it, would have, it wouldn't have been as bad if I had tricked him the Choice Scarf with Tapu Fini earlier, but just having a Marshadow gone and him giving it up when he didn't need to uh, because he didn't realize that I was Choice Scarf Finny, obviously. Um, it's not, it, Scarf Finny isn't the most common set in the world, so um, I can see why he was caught off guard by it. And also I think his Necrozma set was not very good uh, for my team. Uh, like, a double dance set that can't break through my, arguably my the two best mons on my team being uh, Calyrex and Urshifu, like, Photon Geyser doesn't do much to either one of them, in fact it doesn't do anything at all to Urshifu. And then, uh, honestly, plus two Rick Break isn't doing that much to Urshifu either. It, uh, my Urshifu probably tanked that, and I could just click Wicked Blow and, or Sucker Punch or whatever. Um, if he had been Dragon Dance instead, that potentially could have been a lot more threatening. Uh, obviously he, doesn't, he only gets plus one in attack instead of plus two. But it would have allowed for him to run an extra coverage slot, so he could have had Photon Geyser uh, for uh, the majority of my team. And then he has Knock Off for Calyrex, and he has Brick Break for Urshifu. So uh, I think that would have been a much better set against me. But uh, again, I don't think I think we had Necrozma uh, handled in that late game, regardless. Um, and uh, hats off to him for bringing the speed invested Mel Metal. I guess maybe he thought uh, that. I would have a little more speed investment on my Calyrex because he never brought he never brought in Melmetal on a free switch against Calyrex uh, when he had he had two opportunities to do so and he never did. Um, but uh, I was not I was not prepared for a speed a speedy Melmetal like I was counting on Vikavolt to be around to chip down to chip down the Melmetal for the rest of my team. Uh, and then once Vikavolt went down early, I really didn't have good ways of breaking down that Mel Metal, and it put in a ton of work against me. It was by far the MVP for him in this match, picking up three kills. So, like usually when I see a Mon that resists Glacial Lance and is slower than Calyrex, I think, okay, well this thing is a good counter to it in Trick Room. There's no reason for it to run speed investment. Uh, so he really caught me off guard with that, and it ended up putting a ton of work. So. Yeah, uh, GG to Owen once again. Uh, we will gladly take the 1-0 win this week uh, to keep our uh, undefeated record alive. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you like the video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel to keep up with all of our Draft League content, and we will be back either next week or the following week. I'm not totally sure when uh, we're uploading the next games because, uh, you know, Christmas holidays coming up. So uh, keep your eyes open for week six of the BBL against Jess Kurt and his Walt Disney Landris. We will see you then.